Good morning. How are you? I'm Kill the Vid, your host for the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel, and I'm back again with another episode of Let's Play Classic featuring L.A. Noir from Rockstar Games. This will be episode 6. Since I'm in the case of Homicide, I've been doing two back-to-back -back cases, but this one, of course, is going to be edited for YouTube. Previously, I solved the red lipstick murder case as well as the golden butterfly. And now I'm back with two new cases. This one is called the silk stocking murder, followed by immediately the white shoe slave. Right now, on the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel, it's time for Let's Play Classic. L.A. Noir Gaming Walkthrough Episode 6. So grab a snack, grab a beverage, and let's get on on. Ah, oh, Phelps. I was just discussing with Finbar here how well you were doing. Have a seat. Yeah, my real name. And you can just forget all about it. You boys have a new case. A poor Hispanic woman murdered near City Hall and left lying naked in an alleyway. Another naked woman, sir? Yes. We seem to have had quite a run of them since the Dahlia fiend first struck. Phelps is politely trying to hint that he thinks the Mendes case is hokey. Well, young Phelps, you win some and you lose some in police work. You're happy with the Mueller case, sir? Over the moon, boys! The DA couldn't be more pleased with the evidence, the witness, and the lack of an alibi. Now, get out there and catch me another sinner. You have the address? It's the alley off Aliso between Los Angeles and Alameda. You're kidding. The next one will be opposite Central Station. Count yourself lucky, Phelps. Most guys would kill to land a case so close to their desk. Yeah. It means they can pop in to hit the office supply of hooch whenever they need it. You know, that ain't a bad idea. That is not a bad idea at all, Phelps. Detectives, they're ready to start the show. I'll take you through. Oh, for Christ's sake. Brothers, Pinker. The cause of death is pretty apparent. We thought we'd best wait for you when you're ready. If she took a blow to the head like the others, she was probably unconscious when strangled.
May as well follow the trail. Find anything interesting? The lacerations on the neck would indicate a great deal of force. Kiss the blood, BD. the library card. Did he want us to find it? Another wedding ring torn from the finger. No skin under the fingernails. The evidence in the Muller case was solid. I'm not convinced about Mendez. The best way to get away with murder is to pin it on somebody else. I'll bet a month's salary this is a copy. Strangled, battered, naked. Yeah, 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 we know the M.O. So does every jerk who kills his wife and girlfriend looking for a way out. I've spoken to Brown. He still believes the Dahlia perp has medical experience. Four women, all murdered, all put on display, all with messages. Muller had no message. Look, Phelps, this is getting us nowhere. Anything for us to go on, Mel? Head injuries from contact with road, bruising from a small man's shoe, further blunt force trauma to the occipital region at the base of the skull. Could have been fatal, but clear signs of strangulation would seem to rule it out. Lipstick appears to be a similar color to the other cases. I'll see if I can nail down a brand. library card. Proximity to the scene, plus the bloodstains, no way is this coincidence.
kept the area pristine for you boys. Let's check it out. House keys strung up like bait on a hook. You think he's trying to lead us somewhere? Probably all the way to City Hall, that brazen son of a bitch. That's got to be a code or a cipher. Is all of this meant to be taking us? He clearly wants us to find these things. He's left them for us. There you go, Phelps. You got a new M.O. I told you it wasn't our guy. Or he might just be getting more confident. Precious to her. The trail points up. as though the killer was decorating with this. Son of a bitch wants her identified. Mrs. Antonia Maldonado, 712 North Hill Street downtown. Examiner. About five bucks for the exclusive. What do you need from me? This is your crime scene. Do your thing.
I would rather we discuss this later, Phelps. It was Mrs. Maldonado, right? That's affirmative. All right, so then there's a husband we should be looking for. Get him? We've closed the case. Ah, uh, Rusty's razor, of course. I don't want to question your tried and tested techniques, Detective Galloway. But doesn't the DA require sound casework before he'll close the book? Not if he's got a confession. And, you know, there's ways of getting him. I'm sure.
Just a sec. LAPD, ma'am. Detective Phelps and Galloway. Does Mrs. Maldonado live here? Yes, she does. I'm Mrs. Barbara Lepente, the owner of this boarding house. Is there a problem? I'm afraid so, ma'am. Do you mind if we come in? Is there somewhere we can discuss this? Of course. Follow me through to the parlor. Wipe your feet as you come in, detectives. It's this way. Mrs. Maldonado was found dead this morning. Dead? Oh, no. She can't be. I'm afraid she was murdered, ma'am. We need to take a look at her things. I can't believe it. A person seems so alive, and then they're gone. Antonia's room is upstairs, last door on the left. Thank you. We'll be back shortly. Uh, excuse us a moment, ma'am. Look at that. Someone's turned the place over. arm bracelet wasn't among the crime scene evidence. Smashed window explains why the place looks tossed. You know how I feel about windows, Phelps. So someone broke in using this thing instead of a crowbar. Wonder where it was taken from. We have some questions, ma'am, if you're up to it. Yes, detective. I'll do my best. 
Do you have any idea who might have wanted to hurt Mrs. Maldonado? That rat of her husband, Angel. She was serving him divorce papers. If I killed every wife to serve me papers, I'd be a mass murderer. Are you being flippant, young man? No, ma'am. What can you tell us about Angel Maldonado? She married him when she was 17. He was cruel to her, very cruel. She was a good girl, a little on the religious side, but a good girl. What time did Antonia go out yesterday? She left around nine. Do you know where she went? No, I, I have no idea. She was a good girl, but she didn't confide in me. A nosy old hag like you knows everything about the people who live under her roof. Where did she go? I think she went to a bar. She's been drinking quite a lot lately. This bar have a name? El Dorado Bar. It's a Latino place on North Los Angeles Street. That's only a couple of blocks from where we found the body. You've had a break-in? No. That can't be true. You're being economical with the truth, Mrs. Lepenti. What do you have to hide? I have no idea what you are talking about. So Antonia lost her keys and used an iron bar to jimmy the back window? I heard a noise in the early hours of the morning. I thought it might be a raccoon at the milk bottles. It'd be very bad for business if this news got out. I have a reputation to protect. Antonia and her husband were estranged? Yes. She moved here after she separated from her husband two months ago. But Antonia still wore a wedding ring? She wore the wedding ring and a necklace. She always wore a religious necklace. That's about all of her jewelry. What about her bracelet? I don't know anything about a bracelet. In her wedding photo, she's displaying a charm bracelet. That thing? Oh, she never wore it. He gave it to her. She always kept it in that wooden jewelry box. Thanks, ma'am. You've been very helpful. Pay a call to that husband of hers. Lock him up and throw away the key. We can either front Angel, seeing as the finger's pointing right at him, or we can check out the Eldorado one. That's disgusting. Didn't you ever hear of germs? Can you drive to this one? And where exactly are we going? A nosy old hag? Ah! And I thought I was coming on strong with the ex-wives line. Sometimes you have to be firm to get the information you need. God damn it, ain't that the truth.
What can I get you? LAPD. Detectives Phelps and Galloway. Diego Aguilar. How can I help? You worked the bar last night? Yeah. Me and a temp guy from the agency. Did you have a woman in here last night? 21 years old, Hispanic, drinking heavily? We have a lot of ladies like that in here. But yeah, I know who you mean. Antonia Maldonado. But what did she do? She was murdered last night. Oh, shit. Do you know her well? Was she a regular? Hell no. She was good and tight last night, complaining about her old man. It's a story you get used to working in a bar. She was so hammered last night, she left a letter on the bar. I'll show you. Where's that goddamn waitress? A waitress? Can I have another spoon? Say, honey, what time do you get off waiting table? Divorce papers? Did you open them? No need to. She was shouting about it and waving the letter around. Said she was going to show him. Can you remember what jewelry she was wearing? She had a necklace. Some kind of religious thing, I think. The temp guy would have more of an idea. She took the beer he served her and cried into it all night. What time did she leave? Can't say for sure. Where did she go? Give me something or the LAPD will start getting interested in this place. Take it easy. She went to the cab, okay? And my phone was out of order. The closest one I knew was at the fruit market across the street, so I suggested she try there. She seemed reluctant. Did Antonia say where she was going when she left? She said she was going to serve the papers on the husband. Said that would take the smile off his face. If you ask me, she was scared. And the drink was for Dutch courage. she attract any interest? An extremely drunk young woman? What do you think? She managed to scare them off, though. Thanks. You've been a big help. No problem. Hey! Get the guy, will you? We'll do our best. One last question. What size shoe do you take, Mr. Aguilar? A broad nine. I have wide feet. Sir, do you work here? Sorry, pal, just making deliveries. From where? Just pick fruit market across the street. A fruit market delivers here? Yeah, sure does. The Mexes love a little slice with their tequila. Fine, thanks. A waitress. Can I have another spoon? Egg Ronnie. Think there's anything to the divorce angle? I've been through three, Phelps. And no big deal. After a while, you just numb yourself. But Angel, he's a young Latino man. It would hurt his sense of who he is. He'd see himself as a failure, a woman taking control over his life. Then she fronts him and he snaps. Works for me. Makes Angela killer as well as a piece of shit. 
How about we drop in on a husband instead? See if your gut is right. I'll take a bar over a husband every day of the week. Phelps, this could turn ugly. Forget about knocking. Let's take our boy by surprise. Hey, what the fuck? LAPD, motherfucker. You're under arrest. I got a hundred pounds in the white. Got some decent shots in there. Cuff these sons of bitches, Phelps. LAPD, you two are under arrest. Call for some backup, Finbar. Galloway, badge number 564. I need a prowl car at the apartment building 330 North Hill Street. Two suspects need transporting to Central. Your wife has been murdered, Angel. Antonia? Oh, God, no! Where were you last night, Angel? I was here with my brother the whole night, God damn it! You think I could kill my own wife? To get the whole place of going over, then talk to the neighbors. And Phelps, I don't care that you just got smacked in the head. You don't call me Finbar. Not much help.
This will take some explaining. Maybe one of the neighbors took notice of Angel's movements. He's got no alibi in his toes. The El Dorado must be a family favorite. Just picked fruit market. I wonder if Angel gets all his groceries from this place. No good. Nobody here. Hello. LAPD, ma'am. Did you hear a disturbance last night? Yes. Yes, I did. Mrs. Maldonado lit out of here and her husband ran out after her. You saw this, Miss? Aranda. I had the door open a crack. Did you see Mr. Maldonado come back inside after he ran out? No. I didn't. Thanks. We'll be in touch. I kept thinking you were going to call that one a nosy old hag too, Phelps. Well executed restraint. I'm at <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I'm playing with my kids. <clears throat> LAPD, were you here last night? Yeah. My, uh wife and I are separated, and uh, I had the kids last night. I put them to bed early and went to bed myself. Thanks. Operator, give me R and I. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, Detective? Messages, please. Message from Captain Donnelly, Detective. Your presence is requested urgently at Central Station. A new letter from the Dahlia Killer has been found. Thanks, ma'am. Another letter? I thought the letter was from a nut. These letters? Brown and Hanson believe they are genuine. From him. Now we sent another. You know, I really hate this fuck. This Black Dahlia guy. Have you seen the body? The fucking case just gnaws away at your guts. Holly. Every prom queen from 
Every fucking hick town in America turns up here. Where do they end up? Gutted, fucking side. The captain is waiting for you downstairs with Pinker. They're waiting down in tech services, Phelps. The thing was, he was a really nice guy. I felt loud and tolerant. He's a waste in the police force. Good looking boy like that should go into politics. Yeah, I want to make homicide. You know, you've got it made if you can get to that desk. Boys, come on in. Phelps, have you met Finnis Brown? Pleased to meet you, sir. This information is confidential and doesn't leave this room. The new letter was left in the back seat of a cab. The driver thinks it was put through the window and not left by a customer. We're checking all the spares back 24 hours regardless. Good. Like the previous letters, it's been assembled from headlines and type from the Times and Examiner, then glued to an envelope. What is the other note? This one? That's also new. A poem, hand-typed. Do you mind if I take a look? Go ahead. We've been over both documents pretty carefully. They've been wiped with gasoline, so there's no chance of prints. That's the message from the Celine Henry case. Upon thy soul by virtue of this curse. That's why we called you in. Do you think it's original? Not unless he's a genius. You like this nut job's poem? No, I like Shelley. It was written at least 100 years ago. Shelley? Sure, I knew that. You see, Finnis? I told you this lad was a bright boy. Sure, but what has it got to do with the case? Prometheus Unbound. Prometheus was a titan. A superhuman character who defied the gods to bring fire to humanity. The Dahlia guy believes he's Superman. Your guess is as good as mine. One thing for sure is that he's educated. What about the link to the Henry case? He could have got the wording from the papers. As you said, he is fiendishly clever and takes pleasure in taunting us. What's happening with the Maldonado case? We had the husband in custody. We haven't interviewed him yet. Went upstairs then, lads, and see if we can break him. My acting coach says I have real talent. I don't need this. You're hurting me. He's a waste in the police force. Good looking boy like that should go into politics. Parker or Green? Improved your attitude, Angel? What do you want me to say? I was with Antonia the night she died. But she left the apartment, and that was the last time I saw her. So your wife paid you a visit last night. What time was that? Late, around midnight, maybe. She didn't stay long.
your lying angel. You went after her. I think you killed her. You're out of your mind. My brother will tell you I was at home. We have a witness who confirms that you are arguing, that your wife ran out, that you followed her, and didn't come back. I know this looks bad, but it's not true. We argued, all right, but she went out, and I went out after her, and she jumped in a car on the corner. There was a car waiting for her? Can you describe the driver? Not the driver. It was too dark. But the car, it was a brown Ford Coupe. You and your wife weren't getting along. She was divorcing you. Is that why you killed her? We fought, yeah, but we weren't getting a divorce. I don't believe you, Angel. She'd been granted a decree nice side. She pushed you too far and you lashed out. I told you. I wouldn't accept a divorce. The judge had set a date. You were going to be paraded in front of the whole city for your cruelty to her, Angel. Antonia. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> she came in drunk, out of her mind. She doesn't normally drink. She was looking around in her bag. Said she wanted to serve me papers. Me, her own husband. So I slapped her down. She ran out. That's the truth. What size shoe do you wear, Angel? Size 8. What difference does that make? When we found your wife, her jewelry had been removed. Was she wearing her religious medallion last night? Sure. She always wore that. What about the charm bracelet? Was she wearing that? You know about that? She never wore it. She didn't like the message. She kept it locked up in that box of hers. Your wife has been brutally murdered. So how do you explain your shirt being covered in blood? You found that? I cut myself shaving. Angel! I'm not going to waste any more time on this. Give me something, or I'm going to have you charged. My brother, Ippolito, he said some bad things about Antonia last night. So I had to sock him one. We got into it. Keep talking. She said she came from the El Dorado bar. And? It's not one of my places. We used to buy fruit at the market down the street. But the creep there was always running his eyes all over my wife. What's the name of this fruit market? Just picked fruit. Ord Street downtown. One last question, Angel. Do the words kiss the blood mean anything to you? No. Sounds sick to me. You're not in the clear by any means, Angel. You're going back into a cell. You should think about whether you have anything else you need to share with us. You got a stakeout down on second later tonight. He wants a five-star goddamn one. This guy's got a screw loose. Door knocking all morning, but I gotta make it the car in the end. I'm thinking of moving up to a 45. I wanna stop him with one round. What's your read on Maldonado? I still like him for it. Seriously, that line about the guy at the fruit market making eyes at his woman? Please. We'll get to the market and the guy behind the counter will tell us he saw Angel drag his old lady off at him at night. This case will be shut like all the others.
Fighting! Handbag was left just up there, overlooking the market. Could have come here from the start and saved ourselves a day's legwork. Are you working Friday night? We should go out afterwards. Sir, I'm the. Wait, you look familiar. Hey, from the bar, right? What brings you here? LAPD, Detective Phelps and Galloway. Clem Feeney, what can I do for you? Did you happen to see a young woman last night, 21 years old, Hispanic? Sure, she came by last night. Why do you ask? She was wearing a necklace? I didn't notice. You weren't paying attention, Feeney? Hey, you're getting the wrong idea. Exactly how much fruit do you sell here after midnight, Clem? Uh, not much. I sell the odd bottle on the side to the after-hours crowd. Look, I don't want any trouble. I'm just trying to make a buck. The young lady arrived around midnight? Yeah, something like that. Used the phone for a cab and then left. You already knew Mrs. Maldonado, didn't you, Clem? Sure, I met her before. She seemed like a nice lady. Her husband went apeshit one day when he caught me talking to her. She had me back until last night. Where did she go from here? She wanted a cab, but I couldn't get her one. I was about to offer to drive her, but a car pulled up and she got into that. Can you describe the car? Brown Ford Coupe, I think. She seemed to know the guy. Do you mind if we look around? Why would you want to do that? Because we say so. I guess you can. Don't you have to get a court order or something? I have rights. Clem? Shh. No wonder he stays open late at night. People have to get their vitamins. Check through this stuff before we get back out there. Cut someone who was already dead. It's a typical power thing. Once the stiff is dead, the creep usually feels they can do whatever they like. They must have seen it during the war. So what are we hiding in here? This thing needs a combination. I got a call back for that universal chorus line.
to our athletes. This fruit stall punk gets about 10 seconds to explain before I pull his fucking arms off. Clem! God damn it, get after him, Cole! Try to shoot out his tires. Wish me luck. We should have grabbed him when we had the chance, Belt. When we had the chance, we didn't know he was our guy. Strange that he'd leave a trail of blood right back to his own market. Maybe he wanted to be caught. A lot of them do. It's almost too perfect, isn't it? There's no such thing as too perfect. The fruit guy's getting away, Phelps. Get me back in close. Get yourself off! Yeah. You're a sick man, Clem. You need help. Outstanding job on this case, gentlemen. The poor woman can now rest in peace. I'll pay the fiend a personal visit myself and remind them that crime in this city does not go unpunished. When they finish with him at the receiving hospital, we'll have him up before the grand jury. I have a meeting this afternoon with the mayor, lads. I'll be sure to mention your names. Now, on your way. The White Shoe Slave. Good morning, gentlemen, and what a grand morning it is, too. We have just cause for celebration. Galloway and Phelps are sending another fiend to San Quentin. A nice showy trial, and he'll be strapped down with gas seeping into his tiny reptile brain. Now, to fresh business. Galloway and Phelps, the task is at hand. The address is on the hill. 
north downtown off Fremont Avenue. Guy gave his wife a pass. I said, all the Skipper, time. is the new letter genuine? Now, boys, we all know how many imbeciles have confessed in the short I'm case. I'm going to get good and tight. Ray Pinker will let us know in good time. That's disgusting. Didn't you ever hear of germs? A fine morning indeed. We keep locking them up, but the bodies keep piling up. Yeah, California's love of bad so. As long as the bricks hold up to San Quentin, they'll always be killers in this town of San The hell this guy's doing? Greetings from sunny California. I don't want to stop. Now another body. Come on, you can't keep on telling me there's not a killer still out there. You know, Phelps, all these arrests on your record are giving you a reputation. You don't want them turning into unsolved. Getting a vicious killer off the streets is more important than my reputation. Really? And besides, landing a big fat marlin is more impressive than an ocean full of minnows. The minnows make it the man, Phelps. You can't always hit home run. Sometimes you just gotta make the first pass. there will lead us up. I'm stealing myself from what I'm about to see. I'll just be another dead body. You're used to singing. You're the dig when you work in homicide. Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Scene secure. The rest of the patrolmen are going door to door, canvassing for witnesses. Thanks. Keep me informed. Will do, detective. This looks awfully familiar. I think that's the impression the boys from the examiner took with them as well. There's nothing original under the sun. Why should murder be any different? What do we have so far? Not much trace evidence to speak of. Storm blew in around 10 last night, and the rain washed most of it away. And the body? Looks like she was tipped out of an automobile from the tire tracks and superficial injuries. Strangled with a length of rope. And for my money, it's triple braid again. Time of death. From her temperature, maybe 2 a.m. But it was cold last night. Usual head injuries. Blunt force trauma. Knock him over the head, then strangle and mutilate. No message with this one. At least she was left clothed. I doubt very much he was concerned with her dignity. The green silk dress is very distinctive. 
Any sign of her other shoe? No. And no handbag or other personal effects. Same, are they? There appears to be a dry cleaning label. Superior Laundry Services, F1363. I doubt it. No drag marks. The killer was moving around, surveying the scene. driver and our killer are most likely one and the same. Detectives, I've been working the houses across the street and up the block. This lady thinks she has something for us. Detective Feltz, LAPD. I'm Mrs. Barton, Catherine Barton. I live just across the way. Did you see anyone around here last night? Not last night, but yesterday, early evening, I saw that awful hobo. Do you have a description? Tall, gaunt, horribly disfigured. I think he may have had an accident in the war. He's a very scary, angry man. Any idea where we might find him? One of the hobo camps around here. He's some kind of hobo leader. They all follow him around. Thank you, ma'am. You've been a big help. Of course. Anything I can do to help. I'd hate to think that something so ghastly could happen right here and nothing be done about it. Phelps badge 1247. How can I help, Detective? I need an address on Superior Laundry Services. Just a moment. Superior Laundry Services, 1260 West 1st Street. Can you track down reports of hobo camps in the vicinity of Signal Hill? Just a moment, Detective. There's a large camp under the bridge on Grand between Temple and Sunset. Thanks.
Excuse me? There was no message. Where? On the Vic. The last bodies had something written on them. This one didn't. I'm failing to follow you. Can't be the same guy as what you say, right? Before you start trying to link this to Maldonado and all the others. There are more factors to consider than the messages, Rusty. This doesn't fit your pattern, Cole. End of conversation. Understand? At least the rain stopped. They can change back into those white boxes. Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. We're investigating a case, and one of your laundry labels came up. F-1363. If you give me a minute, I'll go find a register, and you can take a look. Take a look for yourself. I've got clothes that need pressing. You wrote the number down on that dress, is it there? Mrs. T. Terrellson, 43 Emerald Street, Westlake. I've got a feeling we're about to meet another wife killer. You've always got that feeling, Rusty. Yeah, and it's usually correct. Please, please, for once, can you not let your assumptions color your detective work? Just you wait. Nordic types show a particular disposition for this stuff. Hello? Yes? Detectives Phelps and Galloway. Is your wife home, sir? My wife went out last night and she hasn't come home. Can you describe your wife and what she was wearing? We were out at a friend's place, Bobby Ross's, for a party. She was kind of dolled up. She had her green silk dress, open-toed white shoes. Those are her favorite shoes. Can we come in, Mr. Tarleton? I'm afraid we have some rather bad news. Do you have someone who can look after your children, Mr. Terrelson? I've been trying to arrange a sitter. Look, tell me what's happened. I'm a 
afraid your wife was murdered last night. Her body was found this morning. We're very sorry for your loss. I know this is a difficult time, Mr. Terrelson, but we are going to need you to answer some questions. First, we're going to take a look around. What for? You don't think it's that... procedure. You see to your girls. Stay here till Daddy's finished talking to these men. Where's Mommy? Everything's gonna be all right, sweetheart. We would like Mommy to come home now, Daddy. What's the problem, Terrelson? Let him search. You got nothing to hide. You want to hear something funny, Terrelson? Some bums think filling out a missing persons report actually rules them out as a suspect. I wonder why the picture was turned down. Need to check if she was a regular. Give me anything to go on. Baron's bar again. Someone must be real sweet on this dive. If you'd excuse me, ladies. I don't think this is going to help us. So she went out without her handbag? She'd have to be in quite a state to leave this behind. At least she was spared that particular indignity. Lars was out in the rain last night. Match with the ligature marks. I'll be out of your way momentarily, ladies. For the record, Mr. Terrelson, what is your wife's name? Teresa.
Do you have any idea why anyone would want to hurt your wife? No. Everyone loved Teresa. She was so full of life. It can't be anyone who knew her. I think you're lying, Lars. I think you were mad at your wife for embarrassing you in front of your friends. I think you came back here and strangled her and then dumped her body on the hill. You think I strangled my wife? How do you expect to prove that? Your wife was strangled with triple braid rope. The bowline from your boat is a perfect match. Look, I know this looks bad. I'm gonna have to come to terms with the fact that I let her go. You said you went to a party at Bobby Ross's place? That's right, Bobby had a bunch of people over. We were having a good time. She said she was bored and decided to leave. You let your drunk wife leave the party and go off on her own? Look, I was angry. I was having a good time. She has to go and ruin it. We always have to do what she wants to do. Last night she wanted to go dancing. Any idea where? Where she always goes. A bar down on North Beaudry Avenue. Baron's Bar. She goes there, drinks too much, gets maudlin, and calls me. I go and bring her home. Mr. Terrelson, was Teresa happy at home? Yeah, I think she was. Spill it, Terrelson. We like the look of you for this, so you'd better give us something. We're at the party. She has a few and says she wants to go out dancing. We only have the sitter until nine. I get mad. I tell her to go ahead, but I'm staying. She storms out. Look, I'm doing well at cards. I hardly ever do well. I married her because she was so much fun, but now she drives me fucking crazy. What time did she leave the party? About 8.30, maybe a little earlier. When was the last time you saw your wife? Around 8.30. The card game at Bobby's was wrapping up. I played out my hand and drove home here. Paid the sitter and went to bed. You're lying, Lars. You didn't come straight home, did you? And how do you figure that? You were out in the rain. You got soaked, Lars. We found your wet weather gear. Okay, I stayed a little later than I said. This cute little brunette was hitting on me. <sighs> Teresa noticed. I was half cut. I walked her home from Bobby's, but nothing happened. I walked back and got the car this morning. Thanks for answering our questions, Mr. Terrelson. You'll need to go downtown to identify your wife's body. I should have taken her dancing. In my experience, Mac, if you give in to Braj, you'll be giving in to them your entire life. We could break the husband's story right now. Call in, get some uniforms dispatched to check out his alibi. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Phelps, 1247. Detective. Can you run an address for a Bobby Ross? Then send some uniforms over. Would you like him picked up? No. Suspect says he was with Ross last night. We need to confirm the alibi. I'll get a prowl car dispatched. Thanks for your help. Appreciate your time, sir.
believe this guy's story kind of rings true. The special of the day. Gents, drink? Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. I'm Benny Clough. This is about Teresa Terrelson? Yes, it is. I heard about it on the radio. They're saying it was that Black Dahlia freak again? God damn it. You know, I rang that husband of hers. The babysitter said he was out. If you don't mind, we have a few questions. What time did Teresa leave? Uh, around uh, 10.30, I think. On foot, in a car, by bus, how was it? She called for a cab. Did you get the number? Sure I did. I like Teresa. The only time she has a drink is when things aren't going so good at home. I was worried about her. Root beers all around, doll. This is a taste Put out an APB on the cab. 3591. Should be traceable. Who was she with? We've had reports about a tall, gaunt-looking hobo. He wasn't here last night? I get plenty of bums in here. But nothing to fit that description. The likelihood is that whoever she left here with killed her. Give it up, Benny. All right, two creeps were all over her, promising to take her dancing. You get a good look at these guys? Sure. I got a good look. One of them was a sailor in uniform. His cap said, uh, USS Indiana. And the other man? The other guy is Richard Bates. He's sitting in the back right now. Red polo shirt. Any idea where she was headed? Uh, nope. I didn't get that. The husband said she wanted to go dancing. And yeah, she always wants to dance when she's been drinking. She was trying to talk some guys into taking her to one of the dance halls. Thank you for your help, Mr. Clough. We'll take it from here. Hey, no problem. This is Bates. That's him. LAPD, don't make me chase you, shitbird. You can't let the son of a bitch get away. Go, Phelps, get after him. Come on, we got a ride. Get in and drive. Would you recommend a special, man? You were gonna leave me there. Who knows what the hell? 
God damn it, get after him, Cole. I thought you were gonna leave me there. Who knows what this guy will pull when he's cornered. We could have a killer on our hands. I don't think the killer would be kicking back in the bar where he met the Vic in. Listen, a creature of habit is your killer. For some reason, they're sticklers for routine. God damn it, get after him, Cole. I thought you were gonna leave me there. Who knows what this guy will pull when he's cornered. We could have a killer on our hands. I don't think the killer would be kicking back in the bar where he met the Vic in. Listen, a creature of habit is your killer. For some reason, they're sticklers for routine. Come on, Phelps, you're letting this lust get away from you. God damn it, get after him, Cole. I thought you were gonna leave me there. Who knows what this guy will pull when he's cornered. We could have a killer on our hands. Everybody, Phelps, you gotta get me closer. I don't think the killer would be kicking back in the bar where he met the Vic in. Listen, a creature of habit is your killer. For some reason, they're sticklers for routine. He's showing you how it's done. Come on, Phelps, you're letting this lust get away from you. Maybe you shouldn't have waited for me, Phelps. Hey, him, Cole. Spin him out. I'll try to shoot out his tire. Wish me luck. Let's end this part. All right, oh all right, God. you got me. I've had enough. Don't shoot me. Put your hands where I can see them. Okay, Bates, you're gonna answer some questions. I have a choice in this. Last night, you went drinking with a lady in the bar. Now she's dead, and your face is all messed up. I'm in the clear on that. She preferred a sailor. You could lay it off on him. Are we finished? Do you want my partner to sap you? Tell us what we want to know. She was okay, drunk, pissed off at her old man, wanting to go dancing. I thought I'd ply her with a few drinks and get my end away. Looks like your salty had the same idea. So what happened when you left the bar? Sailor boy laid one on me. A cheap shot. After that, I don't know. You've done time, haven't you, Richard? Is that why you ran? I'm on parole. On what offense? Sexual assault. Look, I was lying there on the sidewalk. He flags a cab and jumps in with the broad. We're taking you in, Bates. How come? Just for a chat. 
Nice private chat. I'll explain my theory of once a degenerate, always a degenerate. Take him to Central. He's a material witness in a murder case. Find him a cozy cell. Richard here knows the drill. Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, detective? I need an APB out on a yellow cab, number 3591. Ask dispatch to relay all sightings to car 11K. No problem. I'll get on the radio. Are there any incident reports filed in the vicinity of Barron's Bar on North Beaudry Avenue? We're tracking a sailor who was involved in a fight outside the bar. I can check the reports, detective. I have a message for you from Captain Donnelly. Message reads, James Jessup, U.S. Navy Able Seaman, has information relevant to your case. Jessup is currently being detained at Central Station. Could be our man. Thank you. I recognize that guy from the papers. The cop. Response on your APB regarding yellow cab number 3591. The vehicle has been identified at a gas station. Now heading west on 7th Street. Garage on 7th Street. Let's hit it, Phelps. The cab driver might tie this whole thing together. I hope you're right. You see our taxi anywhere? Yellow cab number 3591, sighted at the corner of Wilshire and Whitmer. Repeat, Wilshire and Whitmer, 11K. Where's that cab got you now? LAPD, we're investigating a murder. What's that got to do with me? The fare you picked up from Barron's bar last night. What was the woman wearing? It's a green dress. Oh, don't tell me something's happened to her. Tell me about her. She was with this sailor, and he was all over her. She wasn't having any of it. Said she just wanted to dance. But he had that look in his eye. Where did you drop them off? Said the Crystal Ballroom. What time? Uh, after midnight. 12.30? Something like that. Thanks. You've been a big help. Well, that's gonna ruin my day.
damn it! I gave his wife a tap. I said, all the parents are in He's in an interview, too. Thanks. What do you make of him? Sailor on furlough, who looks like he's in trouble and knows it. Hey, I gave his wife a tap. I said, all fair in love and war. A skeleton goes into a bar and orders a beer. Detectives and a Phelps and Galloway. We know why you're here, Jessup. So it would be best if you answered our questions truthfully. I don't want any trouble. That's why I'm here. I heard on the radio about this lady getting killed. I got leave from my CO to come down straight away. So why did you kill her? I didn't kill anyone. Look, you need to believe me. Let's start at the beginning. You went to Baron's Bar. What time did you arrive? I got a 24-hour pass. I got there around 7. That's where you met Teresa Terrelson? Sure. We had a couple of drinks. So you tried to make a woman who was incredibly drunk? Look, I'm not proud of myself, but I never hurt her. You took her dancing? That's right. I caught a cab to the Crystal Ballroom. You had a fist fight with Richard Bates over Mrs. Terrelson. You met the guy? He's a creep. You should take a look at him for this. He's pointing the finger directly at you, Jesse. I only had one night before I was back in the tub. He had all the time in the world to look for some action. I belted him. I'd do it again. She was better off with me. Sure. You're a shining example of chivalry, Jessup. Where did you go after the Crystal Ballroom? Well, I think the wind had gone out of her sails by then. She caught a cab and I caught a bus back to the base. We spoke to the cab driver. Tell us what really happened at the Crystal Ballroom. I'd had enough. She was all upset about her husband bawling about her kids. She, she looked old. Left around closing, maybe 1.30. Got on a bus and she fell asleep on my shoulder. Which bus? An all-American, 249. I went past her place. She jumped off and I stayed on it downtown. After that, I caught another bus to San Pedro. The Indiana's down there. She's being scrapped. And that was the last you saw of Teresa? Yeah, that's right. We didn't say much. I think she was kind of embarrassed. The cab driver said that you were getting pretty familiar with Teresa. That's not how I'd put it. So the last thing you wanted was her playing hard to get. Did that make you mad, sailor? Yeah, it did. She knew what a guy's looking for, all broads do. Dancing comes second. And what happened at the Crystal Ballroom? Nothing. Not even a little hand relief. She had another couple of drinks. There was no fun left in her. Just poured her guts out to some bartender. We're holding you till we can clear this with the driver. Yeah, my CO said as much. Can you put the guy in two in a cell and inform the commander? Sure, detective. Got a message for you. Sighting of your disfigured hobo on Grand between Temple and Sunset. And it looks like the bow has a record, too. He's wanted in connection with two female assaults. Thanks. What now? Drive all the way to San Pedro and check his locker? Let's see if the bus story checks out.
There's a depot at 1660 Beverly Boulevard. Me you know the way. You can drive. Three suspects in the can and one on the hook. And still no hard evidence on any of them. KGPL to car 11K. 11K, come in. 11K, go ahead. Patrolman reporting that Bobby Ross's car game is breaking up at midnight. 11K, roger that. Plenty of time to get downtown, Cole. It's possible. Have them bring him in. KGPL, could we have Lars Carrollson picked up? 11K, Roger. And thank you, ma'am. You have a safe trip now. Where are you boys headed today? LAPD. We're after the driver of All-American 249. Would have been around midnight onwards last night. Uh, just a minute. Frank Zeffirelli. He's your man. Where can we find him? Frank is out on the 7-4. Can you tell us the route? Hang on. Uh, I'm... Should have it mapped out here somewhere. See if they can be other Palm Springs for the weekend. <laughs> oh, Susie, you are so bad. <laughs> I'll need to run the loop. Son, you're a couple Whoa. of shingles short of a floor. Easy! Uh, we're not going to drive the whole thing, are we? Won't take long. We have a siren. There's the guy. I heard he's an honest cop. There's an oxymoron for you.
Careful. That's the bus we're looking for. Ease in behind her and get her to the side of the road. There's some kind of problem, buddy? LAPD. We're investigating a murder. You had a sailor and a woman in a green dress on your bus late last night? That's correct. And the woman got off first, around 2 a.m.? Yeah, that's right. And the sailor stayed on all the way to downtown. Can you tell us where you let the woman off? On California Street. To tell you the truth, she looked a little lost, like she got off on the wrong stop or something. I didn't like dropping her off near that hobo camp. You've been a big help, Mr. Zeffirelli. Do that again and I'll bust your chops. So Sailor Boy escaped by the seat of his bell-bottom trousers and left the broad alive. Left her by the hobo camp. Which means he's as good as killed her. We can't eliminate any of them, but the disfigured man should be our starting point. I'm gonna call for some backup. Both eight cops. I think we ought to investigate the hobo lead. Well, if you think we ought to, I guess we ought. We'd like a word with you. Save it for someone who's interested. They're fascists. Come to move us on and steal what little we have left. Six rounds won't get us far. We need you to stay for the seven. We need to hold out for cavalry attack. How do we do that? Like this. Stop shutting down, fellas. If you want the disciples know what you did last night? We need to fight for it. Watch out, everyone. I hope you don't need help with him, Phelps. What's your name? Comrade Stalin. Very funny. We'll find out from your personal effects. Stuart Ackerman. You're under suspicion for murder, Ackerman. We're taking you downtown. You. You can't do anything more to me than what the Japanese have already done.
Kremlin's over here, Phelps. Toss it, see what you find. Still working, Jack. I'm off to the Lighthouse Club in Santa Monica. Hello, Jack. Mr. Benson, this is Courtney Sheldon. He's a buddy of mine from the war. Well, I'm sure you two will want to polish some old war stories. Good evening, Jack. Mr. Sheldon. Good night, sir. Take a seat, Courtney. We need your help, Jack. I told you I would have nothing to do with that. I'm fine too, Jack. Medical school's going well. I got a part-time job. Do dope peddlers need part-time jobs? We made a mistake and we're in trouble, Jack. A local gangster, Mickey Cohen, is putting on the squeeze. So hand it over, walk away. What's stopping you? We had a deal with them that they would dole it out slowly. They said they would supply abortion clinics and doctors, but they've been moving it on to addicts and they can't cope with the purity. So your problem is with gangsters being dishonest. My problem is that people are dying and that if this gets back to us, we'll all end up in jail. So how am I supposed to help, Courtney? This isn't the war. I can't just wave a magic wand and clean up your mess. We want you to negotiate, Jack. The only thing these guys understand is force, Sheldon. They got to the top back east by proving to be more vicious than the English, the Irish, and the Dutch. They make their own laws. That's the nature of a secret society. God's sake, Courtney, you want to be a doctor. How can you fight with that? We are better trained. I didn't make it through the war to come back to this kind of shit, Sheldon. Are you drunk, mister, or are you just crap? match the mark under Teresa Terrelson's chin. Can't we talk about this? Sam has taken me to You drive. I need to go over the case notes. Fine. Where are we headed? The husband has an alibi, but no real motive other than neglect. Jessup's alibi checks out. Bates is a recidivist. He'll be pulling the same stick until we put him away for good. Ackerman has history, opportunity, Hard evidence? What motive? We have the evidence. We know she was here. All we need is a confession and we can charge the bump with murder.
going this way. Stripped off me at the grand jury. Case was thrown out. Now the DA wants my head. You think the vice boys get any on the side? Come on, Phelps, on your bike. Isn't there anything else you can do? Ackerman, you were in the Marines. How do you know? The Corps selected big guys for flamethrower duty. That's how you got the burns. Mm -hmm. Life expectancy was five minutes for a guy in flamethrower detail. What kind of a government puts weight like that on a man's shoulders? You'll get no argument from me. It was a heavy load. You feeling sorry for this smelly fuck? What are you staring at, boy? It doesn't matter. You're not dirty in this city anymore. Why did you kill Mrs. Terrelson? I have no recollection of the people I have killed. Did you know, Mr. Lepowski? You hate women, Ackerman. More than you could ever imagine. How much did you hate Mrs. Terrelson? I ache to put my seed in them. Afterwards, I have no use for them. A bus driver dropped Mrs. Terrelson near your camp around 2 a.m. Why did you take her up to the hill? Which hill? I have many places. I go where I please. You are clearly insane, Ackerman. The state of California does not execute mental patients. I don't know the names of the women I've killed, but I've killed many of them. Their necks are so fragile. Where were you around 2 a.m. last night? At the camp. You were up on the hill. You were seen during the day. We have a witness. We have evidence. Come clean with me, Ackerman. And I'll see what I can do for you. I despise your pity. You have nothing that links me to this woman. We have you cold, Ackerman. Her purse and the ballroom ticket were in your lean-to. Tell us why you did it. I kill because people need killing. It's what I was trained to do. Stuart Ackerman, I am charging you with the murder of Teresa Terrelson. A man down on his luck, I can abide. But a filthy red who chooses to live outside the rules of society, I cannot stomach. Maybe poor threes of Tarleton will provide the catalyst we need. I've spoken to the chief and the mayor, and I think it's time we send some men in to remove the godless and send them on their way over the county line. A grand day that will be, gentlemen. And the grand result you have brought me. You two are fast becoming my finest crusaders.
Well, that just about wraps up this episode of Let's Play Classic L.A. Noir Gaming Walkthrough Episode 6. I've solved two cases. The Silk Stocking Murder and the White Shoe Slave. In this whole episode. If you like what you saw, please do me a good favor. Subscribe, comment, like, share, hit the notification bell as I'll be putting out some more Let's Play Classic episodes, including L.A. Noir, Grand Theft Auto V, Sleeping Dogs, and many more. And if you do feel generous and would like to contribute to the channel, I do have a Patreon. Link is in the description. Until then, I'm Kill the Vid for the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. Stay safe, and I'll be back.